Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Let me welcome you back uh, to this one meristocratic channel of ours. And this is Metric Plus Naded Specialist. I want to take this opportunity and then to wish you a meristocratic year. And then today we are going to look in, into consideration. And then we are saying, please hit the subscription button so that you cannot get lost. All right. And then today when we are looking on, uh, we are now in term one content. So we are saying that uh, under term one content, they say study the core content below on the topics of uh, biodiversity and classification. So we know that uh, by the discuss, which I believe that in grade 10, you had uh, the chances of uh, looking at uh, the biodiversity and the classification. So when we are saying uh, the classification, we say that uh, in these organisms that we have. So number one, we talk about now uh, this classification, which are number one, microorganisms. Number two, a uh, bio of animals. We are going to look at those two aspects. All right. And then under the biodiversity of a microorganism. So we are saying that microorganism, we know that those organisms, we must use a microscope to see them effectively. Because of if we don't use such and we are using a naked eye, then uh, chances are that we would not see these uh, microorganisms such as the bacteria and fungus. All right. And then under the introduction, uh, we are given a scale to say that some living organisms are so small that they cannot be seen with naked eye and are known as the microorganism. So in the examination, you will be asked to define this terminology to say uh, these are the living organisms that are small and that uh, they cannot be seen with naked eye. Then you get your tumor. And under this, you must understand that uh, this can also appear in match the column section A. So you need to study those very well. And then the second question would arise, uh, list these types of microorganisms. Number one, we've got viruses. Area. Can we see bacteria? Some other bacteria, we need what? We need a microscope. The protist. And lastly, the fungi. So we are going to explain on how each interrelate to one another and mainly their significance in terms of their structures and what eh, they are made out of. Okay, then let us go now to viruses. So eh, we need to explain first what is a virus. Do not consist of a cell. They are a cellular. So they don't have a specific cell and then they are a cellular They've got no nucleus, cytoplasm, or organ. Say that viruses, they multiply. And when they multiply, remember that we say that uh, they multiply because of they don't have the nucleus. So it means they don't carry genes. Consist of the central nucleic acid, which is known as the DNA, and then or the RNA, not both, but some viruses, they contain one or uh, the other. So a protein capsule, which make them to multiply or to replicate. And then if ever we are moving on, Viruses do not perform any metabolic reactions or uh, emphasize or they don't perform metabolic uh, reaction and also catabolic reaction. So we are saying that they parasites. Why we are saying that they parasites? Because of they sit on a host. They are parasites and can reproduce inside. So they sit on the host. The other aspect, uh, the shape of viruses varies to more complex shape. So they are shape. They keep on doing what? They keep on changing. And we say that they are pathogens. It means they are viruses and can cause disease uh, in plants and animals. So if ever they are not taken care of properly, they can end up killing both plants and animals. This is the diagram uh, showing the bacteria or showing this virus. So in the examination, uh, the structure will be given to you and then you'll be asked to label the structure. And I've said time in and time in again, there is no way that you can uh, be able to understand the structure when you don't draw it. You must uh, draw it and label over and over again so that you can get it right. We don't have a, a formula now. So you must know that at the epicenter, at the head, we've got the protein shield. What is the protein shield? It protects uh, this uh, DNA inside. Number two, we've got the DNA. How can we see it? By this network inside there, uh, the head. Then we are having the cola, uh, which enables it to move in the lateral ways. Then we've got the shield. And then uh, down we've got the fibers, which uh, facilitate 
uh, how it stands. And then we've got the base plate on how uh, this would be based or it would sit on a specific fibers. And then you get your marks. Then let us move to bacteria. So let us understand that bacteria are small and are classified under the kingdom Monera. They are small. They are unicellular organisms and are classified as the prokaryotes. They do not contain the membrane uh, bounding organelles such as the nucleus, the chloroplast, or the mitochondria. And then let us understand that the bacterium cell is surrounded by the cell wall and the plasma membrane that encloses the cytoplasm. We said that the cytoplasm at all times should be should be surrounded by moist or should be surrounded by fluid so that uh, there can be a life in a cell. So that is what we need to understand. And remember that the cell wall, it is the protection or it exposed. And then we should understand that in each bacteria cell, wall it is surrounded by the slim layer or the capsule as a, and then when we are moving on, again, we can see that a continuation there, we say that the genetic material, which is the DNA that is carried by the what? By the chromosomes. Remember that we said that uh, the DNA is carried by the chromosomes. And we are saying that it is a concentrated um, in a chromatid body known as the nucleotide. And some bacteria move in liquids by means of the long threads like structure called the flagella. So the flagella enables or it helps to facilitate it a space uh, so that it can uh, move more easily. Boost asexual to the binary fusion, which I will uh, later explain, where a single cell divides into two. So we say that a bacteria, although it is asexual, but under the fusion of binary, we say that the cell to ensure that there are two daughter cells that can arise there. Case in various shapes. It can be in a rod shaped, like it is called the palace, the bacillus, the spiriferal, which is called the coccus, uh, the spiral shaped, which is called the spirulum, and the comma shaped, which is called the vibrio. So these are the technical uh, terminologies that are used to differentiate the different shapes of the bacteria. Lastly, we must understand that a bacteria, they are autotropic but the majority are heterotropic of the bacteria. So remember that uh, the structure would be given perhaps to you, and then you need to label the structure. I have said it time and again, time and again, to say that for you to master this structure, you need to redraw them over and over again. Let us understand that first of all, we've got the slim capsule, in the bacterium, which it protects now, uh, the inner side of uh, the cell. We've got the cell wall, and then we are having the nucleotide, which they carries a certain a genotype. And then we talk about the flagella, which helps to facilitate or the movement of the bacteria to move from one place to the other. And then we are having the cytoplasm. And remember, in the cytoplasm, we say that it should be moist at all times. It should be fluid. So, all right. And then if ever we are moving on, let us go and talk about the protista. We say that protists are unicellular. An example, they can be called an amoeba. So we are saying, but some are multicellular. They are called the algae. They are uh, urocosides and they have the true nucleus. Algae are autotropic and can photosynthesize because they have the chloroplast in the cell. So where exactly can you see the protista? You would find it uh, inside the dense capacity of water. The greenish part that would develop there, it would be the protista. So it develops so that it can feed uh, these uh, organisms which they are dependent on water. And remember, we say that they photosynthesize. It means they bear their own food. Some protist example, amoeba are heterotropic and they depend on other organic various locomotory structure. An example, it is a sodomia, the parasium, and the flagella. They are saying that uh, the reproduction is mostly asexual and occurs through the binary fusion, but some can reproduce asexually and algae. All right. Remember, when we are listening to this concept, share to those who are concerned.